According to most biology textbooks, fossils show the gradual development of life from simple to complex over hundreds of millions of years. But a growing number of scientists say that this textbook story is incomplete and even misleading because it ignores an extraordinary event in the history of life known as the Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian Explosion is a term that refers to the geologically sudden appearance of all the major or most of the major groups of animals uh, at about the same time, geologically speaking. Most geologists date the Cambrian Explosion at 530 to 520 million years ago. The Cambrian Explosion is uh, a name given to a geologic event, really, the appearance in the fossil record over a period of about 10 million years or slightly less of a uh, skeletonized fauna that includes uh, many living phyla for the first time. Animals with similar body plans are grouped together to form various phyla. Indeed, if you look at the tree of life, you can infer that nearly or all living phyla had evolved by the end of the explosion period. The Cambrian Explosion has been called life's big bang, or at least animal's big bang, because uh, in the Cambrian Explosion, most of the major forms of animals appear very suddenly in a geological sense. From nothing, we have almost everything, almost overnight, geologically speaking. This remains mysterious. Nobody really understands how this happened. The explosion is real in the sense that the fossils are real. There they are. Explaining it, however, is, is controversial. We're not sure. Uh, just how far back animals originated before the explosion or what the events were that led up to it. In Darwin's theory, if you think of the branching tree, Darwin's branching tree, the common ancestor down here and the different modern forms of animals up here, you would have one form to begin with and then it would gradually diverge into slightly different forms and more and more different until you get the major differences that we see now. The problem with the Cambrian explosion is that all these major differences appear together at the same time with no fossil evidence that they descended from this common ancestor. You have a sudden emergence of new biological form and structure and the suddenness of it defies the Darwinian mechanism's ability to produce new structure. Darwin believed that his mechanism must act slowly through small, gradual, incremental changes. And as a result, he expected to find many transitional, intermediate forms from the very simplest organisms to the first animals. Darwin knew about the Cambrian fossil record, and he considered, considered it uh, a serious problem for his theory. He hoped that future fossil collecting would fill in the gaps somewhat and uh, make the theory more plausible. But in fact, 150 years of continued fossil collecting have made the problem worse. Many more types of animals were involved than Darwin knew about. So it's actually more of an explosion now than Darwin thought it was. One of the world's leading researchers of the Cambrian explosion is J.Y. Chin, a paleontologist at the Nanjing Institute of Paleontology and Geology. Chen's discoveries in the fossil beds in Shenzhen, China, have rocked the scientific establishment. Located in the province of Yunnan in southern China, Chen Zheng has some of the world's best preserved fossils from the Cambrian era. Darwinism helps them maybe only telling a part story for evolution. 
According to Chen, the fossils he's found turn upside down Darwin's tree of life. Darwin is a tree, you know, a reverse conship. Very unexpectedly, our research is convincing the major phyla starting down below at the beginning of Cambria. Base is white, gradually narrow. So this is almost uh, turned on different way. I do not believe that animals developed gradually from the bottom up. I think the animals suddenly appeared. Among the Qingjiang animals, we have found 136 different kinds of animals, and they represent diversity in the level of phyla and classes. So the sudden appearance makes them very special. One view that many paleontologists hold is that though the phyla appeared suddenly during the Cambrian explosion, there must have been a long period of evolutionary development before that event. Some people believe that uh, it was a very rapid origin of these body plans. Other people believe that it was a long, gradual buildup to it, which I, which I think is probably right. But there must have been a prehistory in which started at the bottom and worked up to the phylum. But the fossil evidence doesn't show that. The general consensus uh, uh, among fossil experts is that uh, before the Cambrian explosion, 530, 540 million years ago, uh, we have no fossil evidence of the ancestors of most of the modern groups of animals. One clear exception is sponges. We do have fossil sponges from before the Cambrian explosion. But in a short space of maximum, as I understand it, five or 10 million years, which is a blink of an eye, geologically speaking, uh, 30 some odd major groups of animals appear recognizable, fully formed, and all together suddenly on the scene. Uh, this is completely contrary to Darwin's theory. It's not a branching tree, it's more like a lawn with everything sprouting up on its own. If there was an extensive prehistory of evolution prior to the Cambrian explosion, either there would be an abundance of transitional fossils waiting to be discovered, or perhaps those animals were too small or soft-bodied to be preserved. The Darwinists have known since the 19th century that the Cambrian explosion did not conform to the picture of life that Darwin proposed. But one of their explanations for that was something called the artifact hypothesis, the idea that we were simply not sampling the fossil record sufficiently to find the missing transitional intermediates. In the strata just beneath the Cambrian fossil beds, we have a very favorable environment that would have preserved uh, ancestral forms of these animals had they existed. So one of the versions of the artifact hypothesis was the claim that we don't find these missing Precambrian animals because they were too small and they were soft-bodied. And what we now find in the Chinese fossils, in the beds just beneath the Cambrian explosion, are perfectly preserved soft-bodied tissues, sponge embryos, that are, of course, soft and microscopic. The new finds in the Chengjiang formations really completely put to rest the artifact hypothesis. If you can preserve an embryo, you can preserve an animal. And if those animals were there, then we should have found them. And they're not there. Other defenders of Darwin's theory argue that random mutations in a special set of genes, called Hox genes, are responsible for dramatically speeding up the evolutionary process during the Cambrian period. There's a series of body patterning genes. They are called the Hox genes. Very careful molecular studies basically date the Cambrian as the period of time in which the Hox genes first became arrayed in something like their present conformation. And what this suggests is that the explosion of diversity results uh, from the first organization of these genes in this pattern, which then provided a toolkit which could allow evolution to produce much greater variety in body shape and size and organization that could ever have existed before. But what's interesting to me is that these genes are turned on late in development, long after the body plan is established. A fruit fly is already a fruit fly embryo before the Hox genes kick in. The same for a human, or a worm, or a starfish. 
So there's no way the Hox genes can explain this rapid proliferation of body plants in the Cambrian explosion. In biology, anytime you want to build a new structure, you have to provide new information. At the very least, to produce a new organism, like a trilobite, for example, you need a whole bunch of new cell types. And, they, and then you need new proteins to service the different the unique cell types. And to build the proteins, you need genetic information in the form of DNA. And the big question that the Cambrian explosion poses is where does all that new information come from? Where does the new information come from needed to build those proteins, to service those new cell types, to build these fundamentally new forms of animals? And the, the, the Darwinians are really at a loss to answer that question. It's a sudden emergence of a huge amount of new information, and it really defies the capacity of the natural selection mutation mechanism to produce all that information. So it's a, really a grave difficulty. This is not a, a minor anomaly.